Let's go to looking back Texas with Willie and Tony and the boys. Good morning and welcome to another episode of uh, Crime Pace by Bodney Dustin. Now today I is coming to you uh, from eastern Texas, from the piney lands of Texas. Nice monarch just went by. I'm in a section of vestigial prairie surrounded almost entirely by Loblolly Pine Plantation, Pinus Taeda. Okay, uh, we're in uh, lovely Grimes County, Texas. And I probably have chiggers crawling up my ass right now. I haven't seen any ticks yet, though, which is uh, pretty good. As you can see, I got some uh, wonderful plants in front of me, very luscious. Okay, I got the salvia azurea, the blue sage. Not getting too tall here on a prairie. Got some andropogon gerardi. I had a big blue stem over there. Got euphorbia bicolor with its uh, three-carpeled ovary, three-segmented ovary. That kind of looks like a nutsack, but it's actually, again, it's an ovary, okay? So... Uh, if you're going to try and sex that thing, uh, you know, you're not going to, the nutsack comparison is not going to work for you right there. You can see Euphorbia, of course, are uh, very uh, notable for having uh, a composite in a composite flower, okay, a sudanthium uh, that's called a cyathium, okay. Cyathium applies strictly to the genus Euphorbia. So it's it's a highly reduced flower. You can't see the male flowers now. The male, what you would think are the stamens are actually the male flowers and they're all aggregated around uh, the, uh, that, uh, the hairy ovary right there, the hairy ovary that looks like a nutsack. And, uh, those white things at the base right there, those are not petals. Those are just bracts. You can see the leaves got that nice variegation. Wonderful plant right here. You also got the Euphorbia marginata, which looks kind of similar, but the, uh, these, uh, variegated leaves are, uh, are whiter. Okay. Got some, uh, Liatris punctata over there. Okay. That's a wonderful, that's a grandiose bastard right there. Got some Palafoxia right there. Oh, yeah, look at that. Okay, this is a, a relatively tiny palafoxia. Look at how the uh, those brown uh, anther tubes, that brown uh, anther column, uh, uh, contrast with that uh, lovely uh, pink uh, foliage of each individual uh, floret of those, uh, that, those, uh, this uh, composite flower right there. See, that? see how the lobes are so long? Kind of looks like a star. Five, uh, five corolla lobes, and uh, it just really, you know, Look at the involucre, too glandular as hell. Now, <clears throat> we're going to take a little walk. We're going to see what we got going on. You can see you got some gradilla over there, too. See the little uh, gumweed? And uh, just appreciate it for what it is, okay? Again, this is a vestigial prairie. Most of, the, most of the stuff around here has been, most of the area around here has been planted up with the lab lollies. But uh, look at those euphorbias over there. Real stunners, okay? Got some solid dagos. But, uh. You know, overall, you you got some nice stuff. Uh, you got some nice floristics uh, going on here. We're gonna check them out. Look, I don't think he's happy. Okay, he's not. Happy. When I took his nuts off, it slowed him down, made him less resilient. He's you just go wait in the shade, man. You don't need to hang out with us. Okay, this guy I want to mention, right? Just uh, you know, looks like a ragweed kind of meh, whatever. But you know, the whole tribe Ambrosiaceae, the subtribe of the Helianthia Alliance. Is uh you know really really uh, kind of wooed me over. All right, they're weedy as hell. They're anemophilous. They're wind pollinated. Okay, probably invasive as hell uh, in uh, Europe too. I know many of the ambrosias are, but uh, <clears throat> but this species Iva annua differs from ambrosia. It's in the same clade, the same group, but it's got the the, the unlike ambrosia, which you know will have flower spikes with the female, the pistillate flowers at the bottom, and the male, the staminate flowers up top. This has uh, flower heads that got both uh, pistillate and staminate uh, uh, flowers inside the flower head, okay? And you can see, I mean, I just, if I can get this to release pollen again. This is what a lot of people are uh, allergic to, but it just dumped out a bunch of uh, pollen on my hands. You can see, look at this, look, you get bracteate goddamn uh, spikes. Look how long those those bracts are, they got ciliate margins on them. What all the cilia, the hairs. And uh, if you look up uh, close, you can see the actual individual flower heads. So, you know, morphologically, they're pretty cool. And then just they're kind of an anomaly because the, the family they're a part of, the sunflower family, they're one of the only lineages that's wind pollinated. Okay, most most uh, most members of the composites, the Asteraceae, are not wind pollinated. These guys are. That's why they're so resilient uh, ecologically, they end up fucking everywhere. They're one of the pioneer plants that uh, you know colonize readily disturbed ground. You see them growing by the railroad tracks all the time. You got Ambrosia trifida, a member of the same group. It's a fucking annual, but it can get you know up to 25 feet tall in a few months. I mean, just 
really they're they're very successful plants ecologically and evolutionarily it's a really cool little clad there so there you go i i iva annua now this this is a spectacular bastard right down here okay gentianaceae is the family okay this is eustoma russellianum okay named their named after russell's uh uh restaurant they got the steaks and the, the burgers and shit up there in, in, in the northwest side of Chicago, okay? Certainly heart attack food is going to take you out. But, uh, you know, if you need to stress eat, okay, uh, it's your other option besides uh, beating off, okay? If you're just having a hard time, just stuff, eat yourself into a coma. Anyway, uh, that said, this is the, some very waxy foliage here, very waxy, smooth. You can see it's got, uh, looks like it's got kind of a farina on there. It's kind of uh, reacting with the oils in my greasy Dago hands. Look at the calyx. Very filamentous, but more more interesting. Okay, I mean the flower is fucking massive, and then you you look in there, and uh, you just got this, uh, you know, this this stigma. That's just, I mean, it's it's a massive stigma. Okay, very notable. Okay, very, uh, you know, it's it's just like a big red flag. Okay, so that's definitely gonna get, you know, uh, pollinators to uh, to deposit on there. Okay, <clears throat> and. Uh, I don't know, you know, I, I don't, it's, it's thriving here in the prairies. Oh, it's presenting. Look at that. I can't get over how big that stigma is. And then here's the, uh, look, here's the capsule. Here's the, the flowers are, the Corolla's already falling off this guy. And you can see the, the, uh, you got a capsule fruit right there. Looks like it's got quite a few seams on it. You see the style's still attached. And that big ass stigma is still there too, all shriveled. Look at the soil here. Look, it's very rich in organic matter. I guess that's uh, that's what you'd call the uh, the black land, the black land prairie. You know, just the eons of uh, plants uh, growing and dying and growing and dying, and forming a nice, uh, very uh, nutrient-rich substrate. Look at this little guy. Yeah, if you can get up there, look at the hairs on a calyx. Five fused petals. Okay, you know you got you got to know this, Chris. Andrew Pogon glomeratus. All right, it, I mean, really notable with the, you know, this isn't even that, uh, doesn't stand out that much, because, but, you know, you see it in other places, all those, uh, the inflorescence, just, it's just a really dense inflorescence, it sticks up nice, you know, look at the fucking you stum over there. Gotta walk through Chigger Town. Look at these grandiose bastards like that. Oh, that's nice. How's the weather in Luke and Buck, Texas, brother? We've had so much trouble keeping up with the Joneses. Tree car garage and I feel like a sleaze. Isn't it time we got back to the basics of life? <clears throat> Gotta get all the phlegm out of uh, my throat over there. So we just had to go through a little dip. Okay, looking out for any timber rattlesnakes. Okay, kind of was hoping I'd see one. And now we're on another prairie. And we're going to see what's going on over there. Oh, yeah. And then coming up, just out of nowhere, just amidst all the, the andropogon and the other grasses and shit, we got a species of a terrestrial orchid. Oh, Speranthes lacera variety gracilis. Look at the look at the inflorescence here. Look at the spike. Okay, just looking like a... Uh, some rich knobs, uh, spiral staircase in their expensive Malibu beach house. Very tiny, uh, tiny flowers there. Okay, but you look at through, look at them through the hand lens, and boy, they're a should you call a banger. Look at that. Look at that. What pollinates these? Huh? So tiny. Mosquitoes, gnats. A lot of people don't know that mosquitoes actually do a lot of pollinating. All right, they annoy the shit out of a lot of people. I kind of hate them, but uh, they do do a lot of pollinating. Look at that uh, lower petal. Look at that labellum. Kind of a crystalline structure on the uh, almost looks you know, like uh, like sugar on the edge of that uh, that petal right there. Is it is it just kind of far fetched to say? No, I think it's I think it's fine. Look at the way the light goes through. Oh, that's so nice. Kind of translucent around the margins right there. Always love a Speranthes. Come here, just come on, come on. 
Come on. Come on. Come here. Just come up. Come on. Come here, you juicy bastard. Come here, man. What are you doing? Why don't you just give me a chance? Fuck. There you go. Oh, yeah. Fuck. I liked you in that movie, uh, Starship Troopers. Did you see that? It was like a 90s hit. Maybe it was. I don't know. Come on. Please, really. Can we just let's work something out? You got a lot of personality for such a tiny little bug. Hmm? You ever kill a hummingbird before? You devious bastard. There's the uh, Ilex vomitoria. Okay, close relative. Same genus as uh, Yerba Mate. Okay, you got caffeine in those leaves. Now, I don't know if it's going to make you puke, but you could uh, you, you could make a tea out of this. You'll wake up, uh, wake up, uh, get caffeinated, get kind of cracked out, you know. Dry them out. I assume you'd have to dry them up. You could probably just chew on them, too. But, uh, you know, used by native peoples and whatnot. For me, you know, I would just use it and, uh, after my morning donut, you know, when I'm hating myself, and uh, just to use it to go uh, by nice. Do you feel Do you feel like Princess Diana? Like, you're Princess Diana and I'm a paparazzi. Okay, but it's, it's you know, I mean, you really are. You're, you're really gorgeous over there. Okay, don't worry. We're not going to mess with you. We just want, we just want some photos so then you can go. Okay. You know, you like the color of a Brax, a Brax candy. You know, as you get out of quarter machines outside of the uh, the uh, geriatric diner in uh, the near west suburbs. You're beautiful, though. You are. Beautiful uh, Thamnophis. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at his, look at his hemi penis. Look at it. We'll give you good money for this. Don't worry. I promise. Okay, 200 bucks a pop. Okay, a little bit lower, actually, though. Those are post-recession prices. Oh, a couple miles on down the road. Got more of that Spiranthes. Also got a bunch of Bigelovia. Remember the composite uh, family, the Asteraceae. Look at that sketchy trailer back there. It's really... <laughs> Holy shit. What do you think's going on in there? <clears throat> Man, maybe just maybe just really uh, impassionate bad sex. Who knows? Look at the sand, though. Look at, it. Look at the... Uh, look what we're dealing with down here. You got this... Nice, so sandy coastal plain, okay? Got like a white sand. Where are you going? You were just saying you were too hot. Where are you going? Anyway, I don't know where he's going, okay? Discoid comp, a discoid composite, discoid ester ACA, linear leaves. Kind of a man, but I don't know. I like all of them. You go fuck yourself. You don't like them, all right? You know what? I, you know what? I don't even need, I don't need you to like them, okay? I'm going to just mention them. They're obviously lo loving this patch here. Nothing can compete with them. You go over there, there's not that many. Okay, but over here, you know where the grasses aren't going to shade them out. They're not going to outgrow them. Got some nice Andrew Pogan in the background over there, too. They they're, uh, they got a monopoly on growth there. Bastard, little dainty liatris. They get taller than this. They get about two feet. Okay. Liatris, I mostly, almost looks like a pale of foxia, but look at the phyleries, huh? What did I tell you, you prick? What am I teaching you here? Always look at the phyleries. Okay. And again, those pink star-shaped... Uh, Corollas to those florets. This is actually a pretty rare plant. Okay, I do love a liatris. Right, it's a shame we don't get more. We don't get any of them out west, actually. You know, you get punctata in uh, northern Colorado, Wyoming, etc. What the shit? But uh, oh, dink the oak. Huh? Yeah, there we go. There's a there's a better uh, there's a better specimen for you. Uh, that uh, liatris, emotionally known from a handful of sites. See, they get taller instead of that raggedy ass one I was just showing you. Okay, very uh. Very notable uh, in Bolaker on there. I don't know what you just kind of like a like an upside down bowling pin. Yeah, there's a, there's another nice one there, the minion of little fuckers, you know. But it's again, it's weird to see a liatris that's you know it doesn't have its uh its flower heads in a spike. Okay, look at those long ass long ass pedestals. Now in a Taxodium disticum bog in uh, deep east Texas, uh, we got a species of, uh, another species of Spiranthes. Spiranthes odorati. You can see we're a little earlier. You know, I'm just getting fucking devoured by mosquitoes now. This is not the, not too fun. You can see it's just starting, just starting to come up. That beautiful, uh, remember, the, the, the spiral staircase at a rich, rich knob in his Malibu beach house. Okay. This is, this is a rather large growing one. Growing in the standing water, you could see all the cypress knees right there, the uh, pneumatophores. You know, which uh, 
it was thought to, you know, help help the the trees get, you know, help their roots get the oxygen, but it could also just be part of a stabilization mechanism. You get a lot of plants in the uh, Cupressaceae, especially the former Taxodioid. You know, Taxodiae, Taxodiaceae used to be the family, uh, but now it's nested within. Well, it's not even nested. I think they just got rid of the family and put everything in Cupressaceae, the redwood family. But you get a lot of those former Taxodioid members, redwoods included. You know. Relatively close uh, relatives of the uh, the bald cypress here. They get those buttress trunks, you know, to help. Uh, you could see that they help with the stabilizing them in these uh, these soft, uh, unstable uh, waterlogged soils. Okay, and that might be what the pneumatophores do. Yeah, I'm just getting fucking divided. The mosquitoes really just, uh, you know, I'm I'm all for the uh, genetic uh, experiment to eradicate. I shouldn't say that because you know they pollinate a bunch of stuff and. Uh, whatever but uh, anyway there you go there's that guy Speranthes odorata who doesn't love an orchid what's his basil leaves look oh he's got quite a few he got carline leaves he got basil leaves glabrous look at that big ones this is a big fucker oh christ sweating like a whore in church <clears throat> no offense to any whores up there of course now now here we go here's a member of the uh the wax myrtle uh, family miracaceae Formerly in the genus uh, Mirica, now it's in Morella. Morella serifera, the southern wax myrtle. Okay, you got a you got a Mirica in California too. I want. What if they put that in Morella? I assume they they did. Uh, look at it. Look at the. Uh, pay attention to those little those little buds, those little axillary buds, uh, where the above where the leaf the leaf petiole meets the shoot. Okay, and that golden pubescence on a on a shoot as well. Okay, member of the oak order, Fagales. Okay. Got a nice uh, golden sheen to the abaxial surface there. Quite a beautiful plant. Over here, this one's pretty interesting too. Because it's a vining member of the Eupatoria tribe. Okay? The Eupatorias. This is a Mecania scandens. You can see little disc, little disc florets with those notorious uh, style branches pointing out. Leaves are opposite. Okay? Kind of heart shaped with a little, uh, kind of looks like an ear at the base though. So you would say, I guess, chordate and uh, auriculate. Okay, this is a massive genus. Okay, only a, a few in the United States, maybe only one or two. But you got, you know, upwards of 100 in the neotropics. Okay, and it's weird, again, because it's a vining eupatoria. Okay, the whole tribe eupatoria, you know, stevia, agratina, uh, joe pie weeds, the eutrochiums. They're normally, you know, just regular coalescent, uh, coalescent uh, shrubs and subshrubs. Okay. But the sea one, it's a vine, pretty odd. Over here, we got a species of Cephalanthus, Cephalanthus occidentalis, the button willow, the button bush, Rubiaceae is the family. These smell amazing when they're going off. And of course, you got those interpetiolar stipules, uh, you know, between the opposite leaves. See that? Big giveaway for Rubiaceae. Massive family. There are 13,000 species in it, at least. Here's a, here's a member of the genus uh, Ludwigia. Evening primrose family, but notable about this, it's got it's got floral appendages in uh, multiples of five, not four, like most of the family tends to. Okay, but all the Ludwigias are big water lovers. Down here, you got a species of Salvinia, the water fern. Look at look at the weird ass uh, hairs on the top of those little leaflets. <laughs> Jesus Christ! And over there, you got the. Uh, some invasive water hyacinth with the purple flowers and shit. I guess manatees like to eat those. How about that? Look at that gentle bastard. Just uh, slowly swimming in the beautiful waters of East Texas that are shared by the uh, boating community out here. You ever seen a boating disaster? A boating catastrophe? Huh? Kind of funny. I would think so at least. What about that one that just happened on Lake Travis over there? It's about a six footer. Okay, there we go, and then there's the uh, the flowers on it, the invasive uh, water hyacinth. Oh, kind of pretty, but uh, again, invasive as hell. You can see, and I don't agree with this, they fucking sprayed the herbicide all over the goddamn <laughs> patch right there. It's got to be nice for the ecosystem, huh? It's the massive die-off. Just got to find, just got to get some manatees in here. The manatees will eat them. What's it doing? What's it doing? Would you, would you put a little hat on him? You think he'd look cute in a little hat? 
Maybe after you ripped your arm off? Look, here's the mature form of that, uh, that water fern at Sylvinia. It's invasive, I should mention, but it's still pretty, uh, pretty notable for its structure. Look at all the hairs on top of each leaf lip. Those, of course, aid in trapping air bubbles should it get submerged so that uh, it just bounces back up. See, look at that right there. See, look at it. You see all the air bubbles on there? Form an adaptation. Okay, so if you get, you know, really, really hard torrents or currents or whatever the fuck, these things aren't going to get buried. See that? Oh, yeah, here's a nice one. Only known from the East Texas and Louisiana. Silene subciliata. Beautiful bright red. Growing on the margins, just on the margins of the forest. Okay? Kind of, you know, obviously it's not going to grow out here because they mow. But, uh, you know, it likes the full sun. It's not going to do too well inside the goddamn forest either, so... Very rare plant right here. Look at the anther. It's almost kind of a, kind of like a green color. And then, of course, with that, uh, that notable uh, silene calyx, caryophyllaceae, a caryophyllaceous bastard. Just uh, right in uh, beautiful Jasper, Texas. Okay. Home of the uh, Jasper uh, IKEA Furniture Warehouse, uh, the Jasper uh, Vintage Coffee Bar. <laughs> just kidding it's actually i think they got a lot of clan activity here it's it fucking wouldn't surprise me ah oh, put that on the board of uh put that on the placard of the chamber of commerce anyway there you go silene subciliata fucking beautiful color too you could see it from you know 50 feet away there you go there's a native passion flower passiflora lutea <clears throat> look how tiny those fruits are though see it it looks like uh, you know the palmate, the kind of trilobe, the passion flower leaves, but then the fruits just look, it's fucking, it's so weird. You know, normally I'm used to the passiflora fruit being a lot bigger, but these just look like little berries. Doesn't taste too spectacular. Nothing to write home about. Doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't taste that good either. Okay, and the uh, Sandy Uplands about, I don't know, 15 miles from the Louisiana state line, uh, we got a species of Gallardia. They already is the Vallis. Look at that. So the whole goddamn, uh, the whole goddamn ligule has been just flattened out like a pancake on a distal end. You got tree lobes right there, and then the individual florets. Look at that. The individual florets, uh, the disc flowers are red. What do the phyleries look like? This is a showy bastard, okay? Pretty common. Look at those red striations on the undersides, too. Pretty common, okay? Down here in the south. I guess it's southeast Texas, but, uh, fucking A. That's a, that's a nice, uh, that's a nice one. And then you got the sand. You got the sand, sandy bags. Look at the ants. Holy shit. Okay, real loud one here. You see this a lot in East Texas. Pretty common. Looks like, uh, almost looks like one of the uh, weedy, weedy asparagus, okay? Barely a leaf, just a little, uh, extremely narrow linear leaves, okay? You can see it's a perennial, got, it got a, well, these aren't, I think these woody stuff, it comes back from the root every year. It's herbaceous perennial. But uh, it's actually a composite. Eupatorium capillifolium, it's a eup, okay? Obviously not blooming yet. It's a late bloomer. It's a late bloomer. But uh, yeah, I was still. I still still can't believe it's a you. Doesn't look anything like uh, most other members in the genus, or the whole or the subtribe for that man that matter. Here we go. Probably one of the rarest plants we've seen today. Yucca cernua, known only from uh, Newton and Jasper counties, Texas. Okay, when it's flowering, you get some real nice. Uh, you know, nodding flowers. And it was, you know, it was here the whole time, but was only named, I think, uh, 20 years ago. You know, people were planting them in their yards. Very attractive uh, plant, but for whatever reason, it was just probably because it's just got such a small distribution. Beautiful blue color on there. Almost looking like an agave. Oh, yeah, look at this guy. Okay, Lobelia puberula. Kind of at the uh, western extent of this species range right here. Goes on up into Maryland. 
you can see you got the three uh you know okay five pedals three fused on the bottom two up top then you got the uh the, of course little squeegee looking thing on the top of the opening that's the uh fused anther column and the uh the uh style poking out of there you can see this one down here is in the, the one at the bottom is in the uh pistolate face now maybe it's not you know what it looks like it's presented pollen they do secondary pollen presentation put the pollen out first and then uh become receptive to pollen look at the look at the uh foliage right there almost black black and kind of uh leathery little stunner right there jack what are you doing come over here another youp right there agratina celestinum Almost, uh, almost hair-like uh, styles on it. See him poking at the top, and then over here, pest out of you, uh, pest out of brush and shit. We got another population of that uh, extremely rare yucca, yucca cernua. It's incredible how small the population of this plant is. Small and localized. Look at this little guy. Got a couple seed pods up there. I mentioned too, these things, of course, you know, like all yuccas, are pollinated uh, at night by moths. Those big white lily like flowers. Of course, there's the fruit. A dry capsule that just splits open at a number of seams. And there's the seeds, the little black flakes with the uh, phytomelanin in them. Looks like the, the beige ones didn't get pollinated, but the black ones did. A couple of them might have holes in them from moth larvae, but uh, the ones that don't, that are still intact, with the, the black ones at least, are, uh, are still good. Just growing on the margins of the... Uh, forest right there who knows what the uh, habitat was like or how large the population was 200 years ago and who knows when it's speciated and why it's got such a small distribution now but i'd imagine habitat loss has a lot to do with it A lovely night in East Texas. Well, that's all I got for you tonight. Yeah, you go, you go ahead and you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Go fuck yourself trying to be a prick pie.